Hello everyone and welcome back to one of my tutorials. So today we'll be learning on how to create symbols in Flash. So first you need to ask yourself what exactly is a symbol? Best example I could give you is for instance if your objective was to make a ball bounce from point A to point B instead of actually drawing every keyframe of the bounce of the ball you can instead have it animated only once one bounce only and put that into a symbol and simply move that symbol across the screen so I hope that makes sense I'll give you a little breakdown here so first let's say we make an object in shape of a, of a ball second thing you'll do is make that ball shape into a symbol usually it's done by pressing F8 upon selecting the object so within that object we'll actually keyframe the animation of the ball from going to the top and back to the bottom so after that once this is done the ball will keep on bouncing and we'll simply move the actual object instead of actually drawing every keyframe. You'll get a good understanding of exactly what it is and how it works. So why don't we go ahead and get started. Basically what we'll do here is we'll create a ball and we'll make it bounce within a symbol and simply have that object move across the screen. So as always we click on Action Script 3.0 once we've got Flash opened. To keep things simple, we'll only work with two layers, so make sure you click on the New Layer button. Name the first one Ball and the bottom Floor. If your Flash doesn't look like mine, you could always go to the template here, or you could always find in Windows and Workspace. Make sure it's selected as Animator and um, as I was saying earlier we go back to the floor layer select your line tool you might see this menu here so this gives us an option to change the uh, the thickness of the line we'll keep ours to let's say 2 on the stage you could hold shift and simply drag a line across uh, from the beginning to the end the next thing you'll do is lock the floor layer so it doesn't interfere with our work we'll work in the ball layer so change the rectangle tool to the oval again hold shift and drag the ball across your stage you could always play around with the color of your ball so we'll keep our outline to black and the inside to blue again we hold shift drag it across our screen Make sure it's placed on top of the line to keep things simple. And if you don't like the size, you could always hit, select the object, hit Q, or select it and, and hit the, uh, the free transform tool. Always hold shift and drag it as you like. So let's say I'm happy with this. The next thing you'll do is select the object. To convert something into a symbol, you hit F8 on your keyboard and you should see this convert symbol menu in case this doesn't work for you you could always select it and go to modify convert to symbol so once you see that menu you would need to name your symbols we'll name ours let's say uh, bouncing ball make sure that this type is set to graphic you don't need to worry too much about the registration point so we'll leave it as it is and once you're happy with this and you have it the same as mine go ahead and click OK so as you may have noticed if I click on the ball it selects it as a whole so pretty much I can't edit it anymore this is pretty useful as well if you let's say draw a background and you want it to be all in one shape, one piece, 
you could always select the entire thing and hit F8 and turn it into a graphic symbol. So in case you do need to edit your ball however you could always double click on it and this will actually go within the symbol and let's say if I uh, I cut this portion here this is how you go back you click on scene 1 this will actually go back here so again to go inside is double clicking and to go back is scene 1 or whatever it appears here you just go back so of course this was just to give you an example so I'm going to go ahead and delete this okay so there you go We've got a symbol go inside and there's only one frame by default so we would need a couple of frames to make our ball go from resting point to the top and back to the bottom basically so I'm guessing something around um, 10 frame would do so go on the 10th frame and hit F5 If you're not too familiar at this point of with what I'm what I'm doing, um, you can always go back to my old tutorial. But I'll be using um, the twinning method to have my ball bounce. Um, so hit on the layer, right click, create motion twin. Sorry, classic twin. Create classic twin actually. So um, hit on any other frames, and then hit away sorry hit on the frame and then select that push it to 10th frame and then same thing and make sure you drag something in the middle so select the middle layer uh, keyframe we'll push this to the top and as you can see it goes back down there you go we've got a bouncing ball here there's one thing that's kind of tricky you have to remember that we don't want to play the first frame and the last frame twice so the trick around that is go on the last frame and simply have this a bit pushed up so because it's going to loop you know after this one we want to show this frame instead and then it goes back up so we might need one extra keyframe for this actually or no you know what this should be fine so you could do it this method or you know I'll just to make sure you get this tuning of the ball I'll undo everything I'll hit um, I've got the middle hit F6 bring this at the top go to the last frame F6 again I'm just pushing my keyboard down. You could always move it manually with your mouse as well, but again, I'm I'm not going to touch the floor. I'll come around here. Okay, and then you select the entire thing and you right-click and create classic twin. That's the other way around it. Okay, so make sure that this is at the middle, so it's well distributed, the timing-wise. Um, if you want to make this a bit nicer and more natural of a bounce. You could always click in the middle, find the uh, the ease. Guessing maybe about a hundred. You can always click on this um, this line here. It shows you that the ball will go fast up, slow down, and then here we'll put minus one hundred, and it will go from slow to fast down. So. If I replay this, it's more natural. Okay? So, basically, from point 1 to point to frame 10, we've got a ball bouncing. And that's going to keep replaying within that symbol. So now you go back. If we play, nothing happens because we're only set at one frame. So it's not actually able to loop what's inside because it's restricted to one frame on our main stage. So to do that, to have to see it once, we could always go to frame 10, hit F5, 
now you'll see that we've got a ball bouncing. Uh, let's also keep the floor here, so we'll also extend this to 5. So there you go, we've got a ball bouncing here. Of course, we want to see more bounces, so I'm guessing something about um, 80 frame will do. So I'll go to 80, select both the floor and the ball, hit F5. Now we've got multiple bounces. Okay, so I'm guessing this needs to be pretty much at the bottom. Yeah, it looks better now. Oh, it's you know maybe it's slightly at the top. There. Okay. Now you do the same thing pretty much. So we've got the ball here, and you're actually able to influence the whole symbol itself. So if we wanted to go from here to from here to here, we have to do the same thing. We create a classic tween. We drag this to let's around here, and we simply move it. There you go. So if I were to play this by hitting enter, we've got a ball bouncing across the stage. You can always hit control enter to see how it looks. Congrats, you've got a first lesson on how to create a basic bouncing ball using the uh, the symbol method. Um, you know, I hope it gives you a basic understanding of how it works. There's so much you could do with it, um, and this tool is often used, especially if you want to um, repeat emotion instead of actually having to redraw the whole thing. Thank you once more for watching my tutorial. Uh, in case you don't have Flash or would like to get an updated version of it, go ahead and click on the left hand side of the page. It will give you access to a step-by-step -step tutorial with no installation required. I've also left you some other links where you could view some other of my tutorials. And of course, don't forget to hit that subscribe button if you'd like to see more, and I'll see you guys next time.